Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to be performing a binomial logistic regression. A binomial logistic regression, as the name suggests, is a regression analysis. We are usually used to performing linear regression analysis, wherein we use a dependent variable that's in the continuous form. In the binomial logistic regression, the dependent variable is dichotomous in nature, uh, or more importantly, it's in the nominal form. And the independent variables that we are going to be using in the present video are also going to be dichotomous or nominal in nature. So let's go ahead and perform the test. Once I do perform the test, I will also be interpreting the results. So let's go ahead and do this. So before we perform the test itself, we need to be sure that we satisfy all the assumptions that need to be satisfied in order to perform the binomial uh, logistic regression or the binary logistic regression. Well, uh, there aren't any major assumptions in this case uh, because we are performing the binary logistic regression. Uh, the only assumption that need to be satisfied is the fact that the dependent variable needs to be dichotomous. That is, it should have two options or two levels, yes or no sort of questions, you know. And um, that's about it. So let's go ahead and perform the test. Um, we go to analyze, click on regression. Um, click on binary logistic regression. Now we've already entered the variables. Uh, one is consumption of alcohol, which is the dependent variable. And the independent variable is the type of family and smoking habit. So we are trying to find out whether the smoking habit as well as the type of family a respondent belongs to, whether that has an influence on the alcohol consumption of the respondent. And um, then we click on options. We ensure that we select CI for EXPB click on continue, click on OK. Now here's the result and the results include a lot of tables. So we'll just go one by one. So the first and the most important thing to remember is that we are trying to use uh, the consumption of alcohol as the dependent variable. And yes is coded as zero and no is coded as one. Yes is coded as zero and no is coded as one. What does this mean? This essentially means that those who do not consume alcohol uh, have been coded as one and those who do consume alcohol have been coded as zero. Now it's very important to remember that we are going to be using no, okay, the one response, the one here. This is going to be used as the reference variable or the constant. So not consuming alcohol will be the dependent variable in specific and we're going to interpret the results based on this. Uh, then we look into the second table here. We do not see any missing value, so that's good. This is the most important value that we need to look into. Uh, this is the percentage of influence. The R square indicates the percentage of influence the independent variables have on the dependent variable. So here it is 0.49, which translates to 49%. Then of course, we look into the type, the coding as well that's been given. For nuclear family, the coding has been given as one. And for joint family, the coding has been given as zero. And then we look into uh, the consumption of uh, cigarettes that has been for those who do consume cigarettes, they have been coded as one and those who do not smoke or do not consume cigarettes, they have been coded as zero. So this is just the coding that we need to remember. So nothing more. Now we come to the most important table, the one, the last one over here. So here we can see, uh, now remember what are we trying to predict? We are trying to predict whether a person does not consume alcohol. What are the factors that influence a person from not consuming alcohol? So here we see the type of family and here you can see one. So this essentially means, what does one here type of family mean? It means nuclear family because nuclear family is coded as one. So we see that those who do belong to a nuclear family, those who do belong to a nuclear family are 25 times, you can see this EXPB, those who do belong to a nuclear family are 25 times less likely to consume alcohol. Those who belong to a nuclear family are 25 times less likely to consume alcohol because we are predicting no, the non-consumption of alcohol and one represents the nuclear family. And you can see that the result is statistically significant at a 0 0.05 level, a moderate level. So this is a very good result. Then the next thing we're trying to predict is whether smoking has, uh, you know, uh, whether uh, yeah, smoking has a role to play in, um, you know, predicting someone consuming alcohol. So again, here we see, do you smoke? And here you can see this one here. This one indicates the coding that has been given. And one for smoking is yes. 
so those who do smoke okay those who do smoke are very less likely to be consumers of alcohol how less likely you can see it's less than one so what we basically need to do is we need to divide this uh, divide one by this value which is 0 0.03 and we get 33.33% um, when we divide 1 by 0 0.03 we get 33.33% so someone who does smoke someone who does smoke is 33.33% less likely to consume alcohol that's what the study uh, results indicate of course this is a small sample perhaps when we take a bigger sample uh, we don't know what kind of results we may get but this is what the uh, statistical test indicates those who do smoke are 33 percent less likely to consume alcohol okay and this result is also significant at a high level at a 0 0.01 level um, so that's very good so that's about it um, to summarize the results as I told you uh, both these independent variables have about 49 percent influence on the dependent variable the consumption of alcohol and the type of family and uh, whether a person smokes or not also plays a very important role wherein those who live in a nuclear family are less likely to uh, be alcoholic and or, or less likely to consume alcohol and those who do smoke are also less likely to consume alcohol so these are the things that we have discovered with the help of these uh, tests now in the next part of the video i'll be showing you how to interpret or how to you know uh, write down these results so that it's much clearer for the reader so we'll do that in the next part of this video okay so this is just a quick interpretation of the results that we have uh, got these are the results of the binary logistic regression so the results of the binary logistic regression which is a form of binomial logistic regression has been provided in table one now some of you may have this doubt what is the difference between a bin binary logistic regression and a binomial logistic regression well basically a binary logistic regression which we have done here is actually a form of binomial logistic regression right uh, wherein the dependent variable has only two options or two levels uh, it is dichotomous in nature so the results of the binary logistic regression has been provided in table one the dependent variable is the non-consumption of alcohol from the results in table one it can be said that those who belong to the nuclear family are about 25 times see exponentiation of b uh, there uh, are 25 times less likely to be consumers of alcohol you can see this value over here similarly those who consume cigarettes are about 33 percent less likely to uh, consume alcohol again you can see the exponentiation of b and you can get that uh, value Furthermore, the results have turned out to be statistically significant at a moderate level. P is less than 0 0.05. In the case of uh, type of family, you can see the p-value here. And in the case of uh, consumption of cigarettes, it has turned out to be statistically significant at a high level. Uh, that is, P is less than 0 0.01. You can see the value over here. Finally, the Nangelkirke R square uh, indicates the fact that the independent variables have about 49% influence on the dependent variable. You can see this from here. So that's about it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. Essentially, this test is used when you have dichotomous variables on all fronts and you have to perform a uh, regression analysis and you, you know, you want to perform a regression analysis uh, to test your hypothesis. So that's about it uh, for this video. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please do like it and subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Thanks again and bye for now.